Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are talking about the new Dior Bobby bag. So this is the latest creation of the house of Christian Dior that just launched and came out as part of the fall winter 2020 21 collection. While Dior is of course hyping this bag with you know many many influencers all over social media right now i was actually quite interested and asked you guys over on my instagram what you actually think of this new creation and i honestly never heard so many different opinions about a bag so i decided to take a look myself i went to my local boutique i took a personal look at this bag i tried it on i inspected it so i could come back to you a report back and let you know all the facts about the bag, the pricing, the construction, the quality, as well as, of course, my first impression, my personal opinion. And I will also, at the end of the video, give you two alternatives for a lower price point that are still designer handbags at that and that are somewhat similar to this specific design. So if you are new to this channel, welcome, my name is Evelyn. If you are into luxury fashion shopping, but in a mindful and real and authentic way, please make sure to subscribe and support this little space in the internet. Also, please consider following me on Instagram. So I do have all the notes and all the facts about the bag here on my phone, so I will definitely keep that up during this video. Let's start with the general facts. So the Dior Bobby is actually named after the dog of Monsieur Christian Dior and it definitely has a more casual or like everyday kind of design approach if you compare it to the other designs like the 30 Montaigne or the Dior Lady or also of course the Saddlebag. Also the branding of this bag is a little bit more subtle, it still has the CD logo on it but it is not as prominent in my opinion as on the let's say 30 Montaigne or the Saddlebag. The Bobby bag does come in three different sizes and in four different colorways which are black, white, tan and the of course iconic oblique in navy. The bag is made of smooth box calf leather which is a very specific and very high quality leather that is usually made for men's shoes which makes it of course very sturdy and very firm and very durable and on the inside it is fully lined with suede leather. The dimensions of all of the three bags I will shortly you know insert here. We do have the large bag that measures 27 centimeters with 19 centimeters in height and it is eight centimeters deep we say in Germany. Um, this one is the only bag that actually does not come with like a neutral leather strap but it comes with a guitar strap with the oblique pattern on it and the price point for the large size is 3300 euros. The medium size, this is the size that I actually tried on in the boutique, I will show you pictures later on, is 22 centimeters in width 17 centimeters in height, six centimeters in depth and the price point is 2,900 euros which makes it the same price point as the 30 Montaigne bag. And last but not least, the small version has 18 centimeters in width, 14 centimeters in height and five centimeters in depth. And the price point for this one is 2,600 euros which makes it the same price as the saddle bag. The small as well as the medium size both do come with their own leather straps that you can wear crossbody. Let's talk a little bit more about the construction. So the bobby bag does have one main compartment with only one small pocket on the inside, no zipper here. And it also comes with a flat back pocket with the 30 Montaigne also embellished or embossed into the leather, which we already know from the 30 Montaigne bag. On the front, it does have the CD logo and like a belt bucket design, which is solely decorative because you actually open the bag if you just pull the strap up and it opens and closes with a magnetic clasp. Just as with the Dior saddle, the straps actually are detachable. So with all of the three sizes, you can play around with detaching and adding different Dior guitar straps and you know play around with the details. So let's talk about my impression. When I got to my local boutique they only had two sizes in store which was the which were the large and the medium size and I tried on the medium size because I was instantly drawn to this size more because the large size made a very bulky and 
big impression on me and I'm typically not someone who loves like a huge bag but obviously this is just my personal preference. So because of the box calf leather the bag does have somewhat of a very solid and firm structure to it but it is still you know flexible and soft to the touch. I think it is less rigid than let's say the 30 Montaigne bag. I could squeeze it a little bit but not too much. I think it has this perfect balance of being structured but still you know soft and nice to um, and like adjustable to your body you know what I mean to your movement without losing its shape and without appearing to be flimsy. As I already mentioned the box calf leather is a very sturdy a very robust leather. It is not shiny it is more on the matte side but it certainly appears very very smooth and it does have just the slightest grain to it. So the medium size really does lay nicely on the body. It is not too bulky which I personally never like and it is extremely lightweight and even though I actually heard different opinions about that specific point but I personally found that it is very very easy to get in and out of the bag. So if you open it up it does have this specific frame to it um, which is the same design that the Dior Saddle also has. However, with the Dior Saddle, because of the design and the very slim shape of the bag, it's not the most functional opening, let's just say it like that. However, with this bag, because the sizing and the dimensions are different, I personally did not have any you know, problems with opening the bag or getting in and or getting things in and out of the bag whatsoever. I actually found it extremely spacious for the medium size. Also, if you take a look at the bottom of the bag, you will see that it has a additional leather strap sewn all over around the whole frame and the whole bottom of the bag, which basically supports the shape. And this particular strap makes sure that this bag will not lose its shape and not get saggy to very quickly if honestly at all which also is of course a great sign because this way you can actually use up the space that the bag gives you and you don't have to be worried about the bag becoming saggy. The only thing that bothered me a little bit when I used the bag and when I took a closer look at it was the closure, the clasp. So I actually made a close-up of what I mean and if you take a closer look on the leather right above the um, buckle you will see that the leather is already creasing a little bit and that comes from the movement when you pull up that strap when you open and close the bag. And this was a brand new bag I, that wasn't even worn to this point so I think definitely that like the creasing could definitely be something that one would have to be aware of you know to not pull up the strap too harshly maybe try to open the bag a little bit more from the side just to minimize that creasing that I think definitely would become stronger and more prominent once you are actually using this bag. So let's summarize the pros and the cons and then I will give you my personal opinion as well as two alternative satchel handbags for a lower price point. So let's start with the pros. So the box calf leather is a very very high quality leather and it is firm but still soft to the touch. Also, the construction of the bag is really good. It is not too stiff and the framing as well as the supporting leather strap really show that this bag has a great construction, that it will hold up its shape very well and that, you know, it's made in a very thoughtful way. Oh, what's happening over here? Another pro is the lightweight. Even though it is a full leather bag, it is extremely lightweight, which, which I think is always a great thing. Another plus is that it comes with its own strap, which in my opinion is extremely important because you don't have to spend another chunk of money like when you get the saddlebag, for example. It is very convenient, it is very easy to use and functional and it is super spacious, even with the medium size. And Another pro is actually that it is casual, whereas the Lady Dior and the 30 Montaigne or the Dior Saddle are all kind of, you know, very iconic statement or elegant bags. I only, I really only have two cons and the first con isn't really like a real con. It's probably just a question of personal preference. The box calf leather is quite sturdy, but I am a little bit afraid that it can get scratched and creased a little bit quicker because of the fact that it is not as flexible and that it is not like pebbled. So if you have a very smooth leather chances are that scratches are more visible than on a pebbled leather. 
and that brings me directly to the con number two which is the creasing above the buckle I think that is like the only true weak point of this bag. So my personal opinion. I was actually positively surprised when I tried the bag on. When I saw it on the internet, when I saw it in the store, I was like, nah, not really overwhelmed, but also not underwhelmed. I kind of liked it, but I wasn't like stoked. However, when I tried it on, I was immediately positively surprised because it was so lightweight and it laid so nicely around the body. It is not bulky at all. I do not like bulky bags. This is the reason why I don't have a Loewe puzzle bag because it's just so square and so bulky and I, I kind of don't like that on my body even though it is a beautiful bag. So I really like that about the bobby bag that it laid nicely and quite, quite flat on the body while still being like a proper bag. Like, you know what I mean? It's still prominent, it's still there. It is still functional, it has a lot of space. I also thought, for me personally, the medium size was perfect. So I am 1 meter 74. I do have a French size 38 slash 40, so the medium for me, it was the perfect bag. The large size was a little bit too large in my opinion, and the small size I actually didn't even see in person because they didn't have it. So I can't really say anything about the small sizing. And with most Dior bags, I am a huge fan of the construction. I have to say the construction of the bag is amazing. It is secure, it is solid, it is really well thought through. And I would not be worried about the quality, about the bag losing its shape or anything like that. So I think it is a bag that will look good for a very long time. And I'm always impressed with the craftsmanship at Dior bags, honestly. So is this bag revolutionary? No, it's a satchel bag. It's a boho casual satchel bag for everyday use but that also makes it in my opinion super timeless because of the smaller branding because of that very iconic classic satchel design it is actually quite classic and quite timeless even more timeless than let's say the 30 Montaigne or the Saddle. I would even go that far. It is not as iconic it is not as recognizable of course but I think that it is a bag that will never really get out of style because you can always wear a satchel bag. I also love that this bag comes with its own leather straps. Thank you so much. I'm not a fan of the Dior guitar straps. They are first of all not my style and second of all I just find them way too rigid and way too thick and too prominent and I love that this bag just comes with a plain, simple, nice leather crossbody strap. So yeah, the bag actually convinced me. It convinced me more than I expected, honestly. And um, yeah, it's on my wish list. Even though you know that I just got two bags, which is absolutely insane for my, you know, life style. So I can't do it right now. I can't pull the trigger, but I might actually get that in, back in the future. So for everyone who already has a more classic, more iconic and more elegant or statement bag collection, I think it is worth looking into this bag because it just has this more everyday, and casual approach to it. Last but not least, I promised you two alternatives to the bobby bag. If there's something that puts you off about the bobby bag design or the pricing, I have two alternative bags that still do have that style, the, the satchel style, and they are still designer handbags, but they do cost around half or even a third or fourth of this bag. And yes, these two bags are not one-to-one -one comparable with the Dior bobby bag. I, of course, they are not. The construction is different, the leather is a little bit different, but they are still very good alternatives for a lower price point, but still in the, you know, designer handbag realm. So the first satchel bag that I want to talk about is the Cara bag by Saint Laurent. I will insert a picture here. This bag also just came out this spring-summer season by Saint Laurent and it comes in, I think, three sizes. It comes in tan and it comes in black. It does have the iconic YSL clasp on it and this bag, depending on the size, does cost just under 1,000 euro and I think the medium, like the largest size, does cost, I think, 1,400 euros. The second bag is actually a very iconic bag and it is the Marcy bag by Chloe. The Marcy, especially the mini version, does actually come at a very good price point of around 600 to 700 euros, I think. I think the Marcy bag is a 
great entry price point bag. It is super boho, super casual, and it has been around for ages. So I think you can get this bag also brilliantly on the sale or pre-loved as well if you still want to save a little bit more. So that is it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you find it inspiring. I would love to hear your opinion about the Dior Bobby bag. Please leave me a comment down below and, you know, share your thoughts. Also, this video is not sponsored or supported by Dior in any way. I just do all of this research because I love fashion and I really like Dior and I wanted to give you some useful information. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.